Okay, uh, welcome to the last stage of our project. Um, at this point, you should have some great uh, annotations that you have polished and added citations to, and um, hopefully found a couple great images to illustrate with. Our next step is to turn these annotations into XML so that they can be incorporated into our digital edition, okay? Um, so by class time on the 30th, I've asked for everybody to um, create a doc that has your selected four to five individual annotations that you want to um, add to our digital edition of Lady Susan. Make sure that you have that done before class, okay? If you're watching this video, um, you know, before we meet on Zoom, just make sure you have that done before class because I want us to use those examples uh, to kind of walk through some of this work so that you know how it's done, okay? Uh, so it's really important that you have those annotations up on your Google Drive um, doc by class time, okay? So what we're gonna learn is how to turn our annotation drafts into XML. So remember, you know the basics of XML, okay? Um, XML is that extensible markup language, uh, which is a syntax that you use to describe text so that it can be readable by a machine, so that it's not just plain text, but machine readable text. So a machine can sort of interpret what it is that it's seeing. Uh, it's a form of structured markup because what it's doing is giving structure to the collection of letters and spaces and numbers that you're working with, okay? Um, we have a basic XML text of Jane Austen's Lady Susan. You all helped me make this um, by marking up your letters in XML. And what I did is I went through and added a header and page images, okay? Um, so here is our basic working XML text, okay? This is our basic working uh, digital edition. Now it's not complete, okay? Um, I haven't yet added a lot of my notes. So I've just put placeholders here, okay? Some of them are finished, but some of them aren't. Um, yours, of course, will not be, okay? Here is my Four Months a Widow with an image, which we'll talk about how to get that in there in a sec, um, and so on, okay? Uh, so this is our basic edition. Um, you can see all the letters in here, and they are in XML. That's how it's being displayed on this web page, okay? Uh, we are going to be adding our XML for our annotations directly to the Google Doc that is on our shared space, okay? This is our Lady Susan XML Google Doc, okay? Uh, and um, you'll see there's a lot of stuff here that looks really confusing. It's all highlighted in yellow. Ignore this, okay? This is um, the header, right? Um, basically metadata information uh, that tells the, um, the, the platform that we are using um, what this document is, okay? It's all in XML. If you're curious about it, um, we, can, we can talk about it one-on-one. Um, -on -one. Um, but for our purposes, let's just ignore all of this, okay? We really get into it down here, okay? Um, and this should look familiar to you because you did some of this, right? Remember the div, okay? Um, uh, it's missing the, um, the, the numbers, right? But here, here's a good example, right? Um, div letter, uh, type letter, n equals two, head type sub, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, right? So you did all of that. But if you notice, um, I have gone in and I've added a few annotations, okay? Um, so for instance, here is my annotation. Here's an annotation that I wrote and revised on private schools, okay? Um, here is the annotation for widowhood, okay? So you are going to be adding your annotations, which is basically all of this, okay? For each one of your annotations, you're gonna be adding this directly to this Google Doc, okay? That's how you will submit your XML annotations on Saturday, okay? Now I'm gonna walk you through all of this, so, um, so don't, don't get too you know, stressed out about it. Um, it's, it's okay, you know how to do this, okay? Um, so just as a reminder, everything needs to be um, opened, right? 
and closed. Okay, so each element right, that describes the text inside has to be opened and closed. And it's through this opening and closing that you, t that you say everything inside is this. Everything inside of these two elements, salute, is a salutation. So my dear brother, comma, dash, dash, that is a salutation, okay? Now, there are some um, exceptions to this rule, okay? They are only places where you're adding something concrete rather than describing something. For, for instance, here you see this LB, this is adding a line break, and you'll notice that the slash is in is together. There is no closing, there is no opening or closing line break, okay? Um, it, it, this is what's called an empty element. It doesn't, it doesn't surround anything, okay? It doesn't surround anything to describe it, it just is. So this is useful for things like showing where adding a line break, adding a page break, um, adding an image, which we're going to be doing later today. Okay. So you remember the basics of XML. So what we're going to be doing is turning our annotations into sort of footnotes um, that will pop up when we click the text in the digital edition. Um, so this is what our uh, revised, uh, so this is what our um, annotations will look like when we put them into XML form and we see them on, on the web. Okay, here's the one for making proposals, okay? So I've turned this make proposals for me into uh, a footnote link that when I click it, it pops up with this annotation, okay? The other thing I want you to notice is that there are some links inside this annotation. So these are my references, okay? And you'll also notice that there is uh, the, there are these initials, my initials, TH, um, in brackets after this. This is how I um, indicate that I have authored this annotation. So you're gonna be doing the same thing, and I'll show you how that, how that works, okay? So what does this all look like in XML? It looks confusing here, try to just sort of go with it, okay? Um, in XML, you have a couple things, but the most important things that I want you to draw, that I want to draw your attention to is this ref up here, okay? And that surrounds this text, make proposals for me, which is the actual text of the letter, okay? It's actual text in the letter. So I'm basically surrounding make proposals to me for with a reference, ref target equals make proposals and make proposals and then I'm closing it. So I have an open ref and I have a close ref and I'm surrounding that reference, okay? Um, I'm surrounding the text of the letter that I wanna turn into a link with that language, okay? And then I'm doing the same thing here with note, okay? So I have an open reference to this element, an open element tag here, note, and I have a close element tag here, note, okay? And inside that is my annotation. Over the course of the 18th century, marriages were increasingly da, 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 da. Right. So if we go back to the last page, over the course of the 18th century, marriages are increasingly less arranged. Da, 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 da. Okay. So everything that's inside the note is your note, and everything that is inside the ref is the, the text in the letter that you're going to turn into a link. This is why when you were taking your notes, I asked you to um, actually pull out the word or phrase you wanted to annotate. So this is what it's basically going to look like. You have two main elements, the ref element and the note element, okay? Color does not matter, makes not one whit of difference, okay? The only reason it's in colors is because when I copied and pasted it from my um, 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 authoring application, it, it does this automatically. So um, you don't need to, you can just ignore that. Color makes no difference here. Size of text makes no difference here. If I, if something is italicized, the computer can't tell the difference, okay? So the only things that matter are how you describe your text, okay? So there are two main parts of the annotation. The ref element that surrounds the actual text in Lady Susan that you want to annotate. Okay, so for instance, the phrase four months a widow from letter two is, is the text that I'm annotating, the phrase that I'm annotating. And that's what's going to create a reference anchor, okay? And then the second part of the annotation is the note itself, okay? This element surrounds the actual content of your annotation. Now, each of these elements has, remember, what are called attributes. Okay, so remember when you did the highlighting, okay? Um, H-I was the element, but rend, R-E-N-D, equals italic, right, in quotes. That was an attribute, okay? 
Um, so each of these elements will have attributes that work to kind of connect them to each other. So it will pair the ref with the note and the note with the ref, okay? Um, it will also do other things like attribute authorship and so on. Um, the last thing that you're going to be doing, this is not a main part, but a subpart, is including your links um, in your annotation so that the machine can then transform them into live clickable hyperlinks. Okay. So let's take a closer look. Um, this is the first part, the ref part. Okay. So what you're going to be doing is surrounding the actual text of the letter. Okay. Four months a widow. Okay. Um, rattle or whatever you have chosen to annotate with the ref tag, open ref, close ref, okay? This is what will turn it into a live link, okay? When we click on four months a widow, your annotation will pop up, providing everything is valid, okay? Now there are two attributes in this ref tag. There is the um, four months, sorry, ref the target attribute, okay? And the correspondence attribute. So the target and correspondence, target, coresp, okay? These are the two important attributes for the ref element, okay? Um, if you know HTML, this will make a little bit of sense to you, okay? Um, but basically, we are setting up a kind of um, an anchor, right? Uh, an anchoring system so that um, I can, so, so that the computer can connect the, the note with the reference, okay? Um, so I've created these two sort of little phrases, A, four months, N, four months, okay? Now, these are unique identifiers, okay? Um, these are unique identifiers that need to function in this way in order to, in order for the platform to work effectively, okay? So you should create a unique identifier for your target and correspondence attributes, okay? Um, I have chosen four months, okay? but you can choose anything you want. It should be something that makes sense for your annotation, okay? I could have easily chosen widow, okay? But I chose four months for just to remind myself that this is the phrase, okay? Um, your unique identifiers need to be connected to the attributes target and correspondence in particular ways, okay? So target needs to be connected to the A four months, okay? And the correspondent uh, attribute needs to be connected to the N four months, okay, where the X's here are whatever word that will remind you of your annotation. Okay, so I've chosen four months. You could have chosen widow, anything that you want. It just needs to make sense. Note that there are no spaces between the letters here, okay? And the A and the N need to be in front. Okay, and the target needs to be the A and the coresp needs to be the N. This is because otherwise the linking won't work, okay? So um, that's the first part, okay? Um, now, let's take a look at the second part. This is the note um, element. This is gonna look a little bit more complicated, but it's basically exactly the same as we saw before. So you're gonna surround your actual annotation Okay, with the note tag, being sure to close it at the end. So here's the opening note tag and here's the closing note tag. Now you want to notice that there are four attributes in that note tag. So the opening note tag has an XML attribute, XML ID attribute, a target attribute, and then it's got a type and a resp attribute. Okay. You should also notice that N four months and A four months, okay, um, is consistent with what we put in the ref element. All right, this is how the linking is, is working. It connects the note to the target, okay? Um, so uh, the XML ID and the target. Now note that there is no coresp attribute here. Instead, there's this, a different attribute called XML ID, okay? We'll see this XML ID a little bit later. Um, it doesn't really matter too much what it is, but it's just an identification um, attribute, okay? The important thing to remember is that when you're creating your note, okay, you don't put a, an at correspondence or you don't put a, a correspondence attribute. Instead, you put an XML attribute, okay? And that is what the N four months is. The target attribute stays A four months, okay? So uh, if, if you were writing one for um, coquette, okay, you might have um, ref target A coquette coresp, n coquette, and then the words here would be 
uh, absolute coquette, okay? And then your note would have the XML ID being N coquette and the target A coquette, okay? Um, so the important thing is that these A's and N's stay in the way that they are um, organized here. Um, now, the other two components of this note are type and resp, okay? Type is a descriptor, it's an attribute that's describing the kind of note we're making. Now, you're gonna have two types, okay? There are gonna be two types only of notes. It will either be something called a gloss or it will be an editorial note. So if you are writing an OED um, note, like a definition note using just the OED, then that is what's called a gloss. So instead of editorial here, I would write gloss, okay? Any longer contextual notes would be typed as editorial, okay? So that's what I've done here. Type equals editorial. This is a longer contextual note, okay? Um, now, what we can do with this later is we can say, I only want to see notes that are glosses. I, on, I, I, don't, want to, I don't want to hear anything about historical context when I'm reading this, this digital edition. I only want to see uh, notes that are defining unfamiliar terms for me, okay? I could hypothetically set that up because I've defined it in this way, okay? Now, the last thing here is the RESP. Now, this is this attribute um, assigns responsibility, okay? So who's responsible for writing this note, okay? You are going to have a unique identifier for yourself, okay? So I want you to think of one. Mine is TH. It should be um, initials in capital letters of your first, middle, last name. So mine is TH or TMLH. Okay, um, you want to be consistent. Okay, make one up, choose it, okay, and use it. So for every note that you make, you need to have a resp attribute to give you response to say, look, I was responsible for this. I made this note. Okay, so add resp equals and then editors.xml hashtag your unique identifier. And what this will do is link us back to the editors.xml page, which I'll talk about in a sec. Okay. And it, it's where we define all of the people who have something to do with this project. Okay. Uh, this is what allows you to get credit for this at this um, editorial work that you're doing uh, on the web and in the project. Okay. Um, so those are the main components of the note. Okay. So just remember that uh, the XML ID in the note is the N and the target attribute in the note is the A just like the target attribute in the ref is A, but there's no correspondence here, okay? You basically just wanna imitate this form that I've set up here. So let's go and take a stab at it. What I'm gonna ask everybody to do is go to this Google Doc, which I will populate with more examples of um, your individual annotations, okay, that I will have pulled from your submissions so that we can do this work together um, over Zoom, okay? Um, so we're gonna take a look at this, okay? And I'm gonna add these elements and attributes, right? So if we go and take a look at this, um, at these samples, okay? You'll notice that um, there are two already up here, okay? Um, I've added one from my letters and uh, another student had already added his, so I have copied his over here as well, one of his over here as well. So, so he'll already have this one to work on, okay? Um, but let's look, at, let's look at this first one, okay? I've also copied and pasted the entirety of the annotation, okay? Now, some things here we're not worried too much about, all right? Right now, see, um, you know, see the, this reference at the end, it's got a whole bunch of stuff that we haven't talked about. We're just gonna ignore that for the time being. Okay, don't worry about that. We're only interested in putting the ref and the note in place, okay? So I put this up here as a little reference for you. So what I'm gonna do is I am going to go ref into society. And remember, that's the phrase, okay, that is actually in the text that we're annotating. And I'm gonna close that ref. Okay, and then I'm going to add my note, the open tag for the note, and then down here, the close tag for the note. Okay, so far, so good. Pretty simple, pretty straightforward. Uh, now what I need to do is go in and add the attributes, target and correspondence for the ref. OK, 
Okay, so I'm going to say target equals a, and this is into society. So I'm just going to be simple and say into society. Okay, I could simply say society. That's fine too. Um, it doesn't matter as long as you're consistent. Okay, um, and then I'm going to add the coresp attribute. And remember that's n into society. Okay, that's it. That's all you need to do for the ref. Okay, now I need to go over here to the note and I need to imitate this stuff. Okay, so I'm going to go into the note and I'm going to say XML ID equals N into society. And you have to make sure that the capitalization is correct. Okay, no spaces, make sure the caps are imitated fully. Okay, um, you should have no um, idiosyncratic spellings. Okay, here. <laughs> uh, all right, so XML ID N, e N uh, into society, and then we've got our target attribute equals n, uh, sorry, um, a into society. Okay, now I want to give this a type. And this is really a gloss, okay, according to the OED, this phrase, which is now blah, 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 I've got my quote from the dictionary, okay, so this is a gloss. Okay, it's a less, um, you know, it's a less robust, it's just a kind of a, 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 a very brief gloss, a very brief description, okay. Um, type equals, equals gloss. Now I need to add um, responsibility. I need to take responsibility for this because I wrote it, right? I want to be credited for it. Resp equals editors.xml hash th, my unique identifier, end quote. Okay, that's it. We're done, okay? We are done with this first part, okay? Um, let's go back to the presentation, okay? Okay, so the next step in this process is um, adding links to our research. So remember that all of your annotations need a reference, whether it's the OED, a JSTOR article, a Google book, or some other website that you found, some other reliable website that you found. So we need to link back to that source, okay? Um, so that readers can, uh, you know, can verify and can and can read more about um, this topic if they so choose. So to create a link in XML, you use the ref element again with the target attribute that points to the URL for your source. Okay, so you can see what I've done down here. Uh, I have ref target equals and then the URL for my source. Uh, in quotation marks, and then I have that um, citation, Klassen, comma, widows and widowhood, okay, uh, and then the close ref tag, okay. So what I've done is I've surrounded my attribution, the Klassen, comma, widows and widowers information, that text, that bit of text is my attribution. Um, I've surrounded my attribution with that ref tag, right, with the ref element, ref target equals and then close ref, okay? Um, now, it could be a parenthetical phrase like I've got here, right, but it could also be an introductory phrase. Your attribution could be an introductory phrase like according to the OED. So you could turn that according to the OED into your link, okay? The only thing you need to do is surround that text with your ref tag that links back to the OED, okay? So now I want you to try. Let's go back to our Google Doc and we will add our reference, okay? You may need to copy your URL um, if you've already added it. Um, you might need to copy that URL by right-clicking the link in your annotation and then copying the link URL. So let's go back and take a look. So here is our um, sample, okay? And you can see up here, here's my, um, here's my citation, okay? So I wanna add that to this example that I've been working on, okay, with you. Uh, so here's my link. Now remember, I'm going to need to um, right click on this and copy the link URL, okay, because I want to turn this into a link. So in order to do that, um, and it doesn't matter if this link is here or not, the computer can't read it. So, you know, you, you can undo it now that you've copied it. It's totally fine. Ref target equals, and then I'm going to paste that OE, that, um, that URL, okay. And then I want to surround my attribution with the ref tag. Okay, so that's it. That's all you do. We've now turned society 7 d into a link that will take me to this URL. Okay? That's pretty simple. Okay, okay so the next step 
we want to add our image. So in at least one note that you've created, you should include an image that's high quality and relevant for our project. Okay. Uh, so to add your image into your annotation, you want to use a new element. It's called graphic. And you want to have uh, a, an attribute called URL that points to um, the, uh, the image. Okay. Now, pointing to the image is going to be a little bit tricky, a little bit confusing. Um, what's basically happening is um, you're going to point to uh, a URL that will be created by the computer. Okay. The only thing you need to know is that if you have um, downloaded your image and uploaded it as I asked to your shared Google space, okay, then this will be no problem. Okay. So you want to um, embed your image um, by creating an empty element um, called graphic that points to a URL um, that looks like this. Graphic URL equals open quote notes, this you must have, notes slash, and then the file name of your image, okay? So whatever the image was that you saved from online, it will have a file name. That's the file name that you put here, okay? Um, and then you close that element without surrounding it anymore, okay? You just close it with the backslash and the angle bracket. Okay, this is what's called an empty element because we're not we're not surrounding some text with the graphic URL right um, description. Instead, we're just adding an image. We're adding a graphic right in there, just like we would add a line break or a page break. Okay, so this is an empty element. So you're not surrounding text with this element. You're actually using this element to add the image itself. Okay. These images I will collect from your shared Google Drives and I will upload them to Amazon Web Services and that's how this URL will resolve itself. Okay, if you have questions about this, let me know. I'm happy to explain it in more detail. Okay. And then don't forget that you want to direct your readers back to the original source for your image because maybe they want to see it. Okay. So to do this, you add a link like you did before with ref target URL. Um, add that around your attribution phrase or parenthetical. Okay, so in the case here, what I've done is I've written out that sentence. Okay, the image included here, a 1791 fashion plate from the Museum of Fine Arts, Boston, shows aristocratic morning wear in a French context, which would likely have been attractive to a character like Lady Susan. Okay, so that's the little text that I'm adding here to attribute and, and explain and describe the image. Here's the actual image that I've embedded, graphic URL equals, and then here's the file name for this image, okay, which I've uploaded to our shared Google Drive space. And here is the source where I found that image, okay? So a, 1790, a 1781 fashion plate from the Museum of Fine Arts Boston then becomes my attribution. I am surrounding that text with this element, ref, ref, okay, as you can see here. Okay, so that what that will do is turn this text, a 1781 fashion plate from the Museum of Fine Arts Boston, into a link that will take me to this website. Okay, it'll take me right back here to this website. Okay. All right. So now I want you to try. Let's go back to the Google Doc and we'll add our image. Okay. I'll show you how that's done. Now, in this case, I don't have an image for this note. Okay, but if I wanted to add an image in my annotation, it would look like this, okay? Now, the very last thing we need to do is give credit, okay? So you are going to um, acknowledge your authorship of these annotations. So remember that personal identifier that you added to the resp attribute in your note, okay? Resp equals editors.xml hashtag th, okay, in quotation marks. Um, that personal identifier, th, which was mine, okay, is defined in a file, another, a different file called editors.xml. And each contributor to the project has an entry. And this is what's going to allow us to attribute your work to you on the site. Okay, so if you want to be identified publicly as the author of your notes, you need to fill out this public release form. Okay. If you do not 
want to be identified publicly as the author of your annotations, don't fill out the release form. But you still must add this responsibility line and an item for your name here. Okay, so I will go and check who's responded to this form and those people who did not fill out the form, I will replace your editor's hash th with or, you know, or, or nd, okay, I will replace that with mu stud staff, mu students and staff, okay, and that will be generic and that's how the annotations will be sourced, okay, as by students and staff of Marymount University instead of by Tanya Howe. So it's up to you, right? But for this purpose, um, you need in your notes to have, to assume responsibility. Whether you choose to be identified ultimately publicly as the author of your source is up to you, okay? If you want to, fill out the form. If you don't want to, don't fill out the form, okay? Um, if you've already filled out the form and you wanna change your mind, send me an email, okay? Now, this is how it will look, okay? In the editors.xml file, every person who's involved in the construction of this digital edition will have a person attribute, sorry, a person element in this editors.xml file, okay? Here is the generic one for MU student staff, okay? And we have a forename and a surname, students and staff, Marymount University. And here is an example of what it would look like for an individual. Person XML ID equals AR for Amy Ritterhoff, okay, forename and surname. And I've put affiliation down here as well. So make sure that the only thing you need to do is copy person to person, copy one of these elements, what, complete elements that includes all of the nested elements as well, and paste it underneath a closed tag. So you're just gonna add a new person item for yourself, okay? So to, um, to show you what this looks like, um, let's go and take a look at the editor's page. Okay, so here is the editors.xml page, which is in our shared Google Drive. Okay, so all you're going to be doing, okay, is copying one of these, pasting it, okay, and then changing this so it's so it matches you. T H Tanya. Wow. That is it. Okay. Now every time you use that uh, resp equals editors.xml hash th, you will be associated as author of that annotation, okay? And the way this works on the site itself is as follows, okay? Let's say I want to see all of the things that th has authored, I can click this and it will take me to all of the annotations I have made. Okay, um, and it will do the same for you, okay? So all of the annotations that you create will be visible here. Okay? Uh, so remember, if you do not want to be acknowledged as an individual author, okay, you can choose to, um, to not do that. But for the purposes of this project, I want everybody to have a unique identifier and give and take responsibility in your annotations. The determining factor of whether you are recognized publicly on the website will be if you sign the release form, okay? The editors.xml file is linked here, right? And you can see what we've done just now, okay? Uh, so that is that. Okay, I'm gonna delete this so that uh, it doesn't confuse anybody later. And, um, just reminder that your XML annotations are going to be due Saturday. Now, in order to do these annotations, you're going to be adding them directly to our shared Google Doc. Okay, so go to our shared Google Doc, ladysusan.xml. Okay, and here is where you add, this is the file that I showed you earlier. This is where you add all of your annotations. Okay, so this is our actual XML file of um, Lady Susan, okay, you can see here are some of my notes, the make proposals, um, the guardian annotation, um, and so on, okay. Um, here's the uh, widowhood um, example that I was working with, okay. So what you want to do is you want to add your note, okay, 
which should end up looking just like this without the highlighting or whatever, that doesn't matter. And you just want to replace four months a widow, right? With your whole reference and note, okay? So um, for instance, um, if I want to turn Uh, where is it? Where is it? Where is it? Um, there are too many things open. Okay. Um, so let's say I wanted to turn this into society, this phrase into society. Okay. I wanted to use this note that I've just created here. Okay. I wanted to add that to the XML file. Okay. I copy it from here okay. uh, or wherever you've worked on it. Okay. Um, I'm going to go back to the um, ladysusan.xml, okay, and I'm going to find the place into society, okay, which is here. Right? So normally I don't, um, right, so this is what it would look like, right, uh, originally. This is the phrase that I'm turning into a note, so I'm going to highlight that, okay, and I'm going to paste. And now what has happened is I have turned this phrase into society, okay into a note, right? Um, so that is how you do it, okay? Uh, you can also, if you so choose, um, you know, work directly on this, um, you know, for your XML annotations, um, you know, for today, if you, if you so choose, but I find that it's just simpler to sort of do it separately um, in case you have a difficulty dealing with and navigating all of this text, okay? So you'll have to go and find your phrase Right. So, you know, if you are in, if you know that you're working in letter 22, then do control F letter um, X, X, I, I. Uh, it didn't show up. Let's see. Um, X, X, right. I, I. Okay. Here we go. Letter 22. Okay. Then you go and look through letter 22 and you find the, the word that you are going to annotate. And that's where you put your XML. Okay. So add your annotations directly to our shared Google Doc, Lady Susan. And I have done it in my models that to give you, you know, an example, okay? And I've highlighted those in the XML file itself, okay? So you can, you can see that I've added these comments up here and, and um, responded to other comments. So if we go up to the top um, where I've added these texts, okay? So you can see, um, here is my revised note for widowhood, okay, with an added image. So you should be able to, to sort of see where I've added these um, by looking for these notes, okay? Um, if you have questions, email me, or you can use that comment feature to ask questions. Okay, you can see down here, um, one of your peers had asked a question, okay? and I responded here. Okay. So once I've gotten your XML into the Google Doc, what I'm gonna do is look over your work and give you some feedback, and then a student volunteer and I will silently make corrections to ensure that the XML is correct and it validates, and then I will upload it to create our digital edition. I'm gonna to try to do this by Monday of exam week at the very latest, so that you can see what it all looks like on the website, okay? And you might be able to use that as you're working on your reflective essay. Um, so uh, that means it's really important that you try to get your XML annotations done by Saturday, okay? Add them directly to that Google Doc by Saturday, and that will give um, me time on Sunday to validate everything and upload it to GitHub, okay? And make it go live for our viewing pleasure. Right, so, um, so that's that. Uh, I hope this has been helpful for you and I will make this available before our Zoom meeting in case you, you know, wanna take a look and uh, get a sneak peek as it were, okay? All right, um, have a great uh, rest of your weekend and I will see you on Thursday, if not sooner.